Hi, this is Jim uh, from CableSupply.com again. And if you watched our other videos on how to uh, uh, cut a hole in the drywall and how to uh, fish wire down a metal uh, beamed uh, drywall, um, what we're going to talk about now is a wooden uh, uh, wall. And you'll find this sometimes in commercial settings, but mostly in homes. Uh, so come on over here. Let's take a look at this. It's wood construction. It usually has plywood on both sides and um, of course the wall isn't this high, it's normally 8 or 10 feet high. Uh, and what you'll find in the drywall uh, made out of wood is that you'll find that they have things in there called fire breaks. And this is just roughly put together just so you have an idea. Uh, but a lot of times people don't understand that when you're cabling in wood construction it's a lot more difficult than cabling in metal construction where you don't have fire breaks in the metal uh, I-beams. Uh, uh, but only found in the wooden 2x4s uh, 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 construction uh, type of material. So one of the first things you have to do is when you get on top of the ladder and you're on top of the wall is you, you take a drill and you drill a hole through here. And it's no different than the, um, than the metal construction. Uh, you have to drill a hole through it or you have to punch a hole through the top to start with. Also, well, when you're working from this side, sometimes you don't know where the fire break is. So you take uh, your your uh, fiberglass rods, we call them fishing rods, and they screw together to give you the length that you need. And we sell these at our website. And what you do is you drop it down, and then you hit the firewall. Why don't you take a right around there and let's see the firewall. So you start hitting the firewall. You see, you can see it there. Where you're hitting the firewall, and you know you're not all the way down at the bottom where you need to do your. Uh, and again, this is this has drywall here, so it's keeping it in the thing. So you know how far down your 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 fire break is in your wall. Okay, and these are fire breaks. These little two by fours here. So what you do is you hold your hand right where the fire break, or right where the the uh, uh, the fish rod goes in and you pull it out and come over to the side and then obviously you can see here you can see the screws where we put the but normally you can't see those screws normally that's covered up and been patched and and painted so you can't see it so right now you know where your fire break is on the wall which is a great advantage Okay, since we already know the fire break is right here, because we marked it using the rods, what we need to do is cut a hole here. But you just don't want to cut a hole straight in and a little square cut out uh, type of thing, because if you do that, what will happen is it, it's very difficult to patch that, and it becomes a pain in the neck. So what you want to do is you want to cut in from an angle, and you want to give yourself plenty of room here. So you're going to do what, what we call a pumpkin cut you know how you cut the top of a pumpkin so the lid doesn't fall in so you're going on an angle and make the angle as severe as you can okay same thing here and cut the hole as big as you need it stop there because you don't want to cut this top piece here because you want something to hinge when you when you open up the wall so you're going to stick this through and then you're going to do everything you can to uh, pop that out okay there's my nice little hole see it and then when it's time to cover it up it's easy to spackle that down it's an easy repair. It doesn't go all the way through. So it's a nice little cut in the wall. Nice little flap. I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to stick it in here and I'm going to and I 
cut my hole through there. And, and you can see how the hole goes through. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to again, from the top of the wall, drop this down. And sometimes, sometimes you can't get it. I go around the back there. Sometimes you can't get it to go in. So you want to you push it through to where you can feel it. And then you drop your, your rod right through to the bottom. And that's how you fish the wall. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our low voltage uh, bracket. It's called an NP1. We sell these on the website. And the thing you have to remember is our low voltage, uh, you do not need a whole a metal a box like you do with 110. And the reason why is low voltage will not start a fire. Uh, unless this is a firewall, then you're going to need a metal box if it's a firewall. Um, because you can't, uh, you want to prevent the fire from one side of the wall going to the other side of the wall, which may be someone else's uh, suite or building or, or something else. So you have to know whether you're dealing with a firewall or not. So the first thing you do is you take your MP1 and you line it up, level it, anything you want to do. And you make your four little marks there. On the four corners. And the reason I use a drywall saw and not a router or drill or anything else is it's just a lot easier. It just goes a lot faster. Always goes horizontal first because if you run into a beam and you're stuck here, all you need to do is turn around and, and move out and then cut your side up. But if once you cut these sides up and then you run into a beam and the beam's right in the middle of what you're doing, then you end up with a big cut in the wall. So always go horizontal first. And notice I'm not too careful about keeping it straight or level because this little uh, MP1 and I always push it through, let it stay in the wall. These MP1s really cover up a lot of mistakes and you need a little play anyway to get them straight and level later when it's time to put the face plate on. The okay, next thing you do is you tighten up your bracket. Get in close here so you can see it. You tighten up your bracket. Same thing up here. Tighten it up. Now if you notice, I'm just not grabbing it. I'm pinching the edges there. I'm not going completely through. I'm pinching the edges. And that gets it really tight. That is tight. And I'm reaching through. I'm going to grab my fiberglass rod. And I'm going to bring it through. Next I'm going to take my cable. And we do sell cable in boxes. Uh, these pull boxes are the best way to go. The reels, when you pull them, and then all of a sudden you stop, the reel still can turn and they, it gets tangled. Pull boxes are great. So we always use pull boxes when we cable buildings. Now I'm just going to pull this through. There's my wire. Uh, the things I'm showing you is from experience and uh, um, from cabling and running a cabling crew for all these years. But you know, I'm sure that other people have written books that show you a little differently. But this has worked well for us, and um, we've not had any problems cabling skyscrapers and houses and things like that but again you want to go pretty much a comfortable length out you don't want to go short here okay a lot of people say well you're gonna lose a foot of cable and six and who cares you lose a foot of cable now the most expensive cable in the world is the cable that's six inches too short then you gotta pull the whole cable again and it's just not worth it so if the wall's not painted you just wrap it up like this and you stick it right there and then when they paint the wall you come back and you call what, what we call set finish which is put the uh, face plate on with the jack and test it this is easily repaired remember if you have the tools 
you know, you have the parts, the drywall saw, the MP1, the uh, fish rods, uh, it goes a lot easier uh, than uh, not having the, the parts. Um, and we sell all these uh, parts, we do not sell drywall saw, of course, but we do sell the, the cable, the MP1, uh, 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 P-ring, uh, plaster ring, they call it a P-ring, uh, for short it's a plaster ring. And then also we also sell the uh, fish rods, and so if you need these things, uh, happy to sell them to you at cablesupply.com. And uh, again, my name is Jim Gibson, and thank you for your time.